All right, welcome to another episode of the MMA Fight Game Podcast. We are here with Uber Fast Rising Mason Lewis, who is set to headline Rage in the Cage 24, April 6th at the legendary Tim Hortons Iceplex behind MCC in Rochester, New York. He is fighting uh, Tim Fargo, who is a stalwart, the number one New York-ranked amateur bantamweight fighter. He's also the number one U.S. Northeast uh, amateur bantamweight fighter. They are both fighting for the full contact promotions and the ISKA 135-pound bantamweight title. Mason completely blistered onto the scene uh, basically last May, and he has uh, just ascended uh, very fast. And uh, the sky is the limit. We are very high on him. Mason, I truly appreciate making time on a Friday night. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Um, no, it's no worries. You know, we're just at the end of fight camp right now, so it's relaxed time, you know, um, training still, um, just having fun with it and just enjoying my myself uh, during this last week. Yeah, I definitely try to get these interviews in before a fight week starts and the weight cut and, you know, things like that because I know how miserable sometimes uh, that can be. I, I want to start, ha have you imagined this ascension up the ranks currently you're number 10 on tapology i think you should be higher personally but has this have you manifested all this did you think this was all gonna come to fruition like like it has uh yeah um honestly i do a lot of self-writing um i i like i like the word that you use manifestation um i've 100 percent seen this i've dreamt about it i daydream about it i envision this during my runs during my spars um everything that i have done so far in my career in amateur i have had visions from um and i've wrote down um even this fight i was writing down this fight for almost seven months now that i would get this fight you know before we even before we even knew um where this was going who this guy was, you know, I, I had written down that, you know, I was going to get this guy, we were going to get the job done. Um, I just, I really like to, to write down my life. I feel like once you write it on paper, you're, you're writing it into existence. And I truly believe that I do all the right things in my path to uh, succeed. And um, yeah, I've been, I've envisioned this process. This process is no, is by any means, no surprise to me whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, you, did you write down Tim's name or did you just write down the number one guy? No, I wrote down Tim's name. Um, okay. Tim's name. Yes. Yeah. You know, this is probably this card that you boys are headlining is probably the biggest amateur card in the country for this year. In my opinion, uh, if not the U S Northeast, I mean, you, you're on a, 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 a stratospheric rise. Tim is also, just a stalwart number one in the U S Northeast New York state. Both of you guys have maybe one or less fights before you guys go pro and start getting paid. What is your expectations for April 6th? And then are you looking to go pro after this fight or what is next? So my vision for April 6th, is getting the job done. I won't really speak on too much, but um, I won't speak on too much of how I'm going to get the job done. I mean, everybody knows I'm a wrestler, you know? Yeah. You know, let's let's stick with that. Uh, but as far as after, honestly, it's completely up to my coach. Would I love to go pro in a perfect world? Yes. But as we know, we don't live in a perfect world. So, um. And plus, like, I, I trust my coach with, with everything I've got in my life. That coach could tell me to jump off a bridge, and I would think it's because there's some guy at the bottom of that bridge ready for me to smash. So um, um, I just – I trust my coach. So it, whatever he tells me is what I'm going to do, you know, and not just in fighting in general, but I've, I've went to him for some life advice, and, like, I just trust him wholeheartedly. Um, so if he tells me, Mason, I think you should go pro, I'm going pro. If he tells me, hey, I think we should fight five more times, I'm fighting five more times in amateur. Um, I'm doing whatever whatever Coach Burhands tells me to do. So uh, I'm completely um, just 
bought into him as a coach and as a human being in general. So it's completely up to him. Yeah, that that's that's interesting because you know the 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 word on the street and, and you can discuss it and not is that after this fight you you might be testing out the waters at 125 pounds. Uh, is, is that true? And the fly weight? Can you repeat that one more time? You you froze a little bit. Oh, my internet connection is unstable. Let me see. Is that better? Can you hear me now, Mason? What's going on here, Mason? Can you hear me? Oh, it says connection. There it is. There you what go. What was going on? I think it was your, you your 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 connection. Might have been. I've got pretty good, but what was that? So, uh, so I was asking you, um, you know, the word on the street, and you can comment if you'd like, is that after this bout, you guys are going to test 125 pounds, see how that cut goes in the flyweight, and that that goes well, that's when you're going to make the jump. Is that what? kind of the plan is for now depending or is that dependent on the outcome of next saturday night at the tim horns ice plex at, at full contact promotions rage in the cage 24 you know it completely depends on my body it depends on the outcome of the fight um honestly there's anything's up in the air at this point in terms of me staying at 35 me going down to 25 i could even decide you know maybe i want to take on lifting and go up to 45 the, the world is the the opportunities are endless for me i feel like i regardless of what weight class i go you're going to see the same mason lewis and i can promise that yeah i love it well if you get into the weightlifting you know i do know a guy that could uh probably help you a little bit with that weightlifting stuff so uh let I'll me help let me know um, with, as part of your training, um, I know you got some heck of uh, training partners. Um, do you do anything with the mental side of the game? I don't know if you heard our interview with LFA fighter, uh, Liam Anderson, but he, he does a lot of mental, uh, preparation before his, his bouts. And you kind of were talking about that in the beginning. Do you do anything like that? Um, so I do, I like to envision my process. I like to write down my process. I like to sit down and just close my eyes and just think very deeply about what my why is. I always like to sit to myself, you know, before my fights and think about why I do this and why I want it and why I deserve it and why I will get it. Um, so I definitely think the mental side of this game is more important than the physical side because everybody's got all the attributes, um, you know. My opponent is just as strong as I am. I'm sure his wrestling is just as good as mine. I'm sure his striking is just as good as mine. You know, it could be better in all of those areas. However, I know that my mind is tougher than a lot of people's. Um, I know I go through uh, kind of hell and back in my mind every day. I like to take those deep mental journeys, um, not just with fighting, but in life in general. And uh, I really do believe, you know, that your mental toughness is probably the most important part of being a fighter. Yeah. You know, that kind of goes into your performance over the summer at the etiquette takedown. When you took on Deandre Porter, you were in some really tough spots and yeah. your mental toughness definitely, definitely showed through because a, a weaker minded opponent may have tapped because there were some very sketch uh positions you were in uh at that yeah. time do you attribute being able to fight through those with a porter fight uh because of that mental side 100 percent. you know in that fight i uh i was in that that triangle and i was thinking to myself you know that there's a john jones quote you know that he that he had stated in his uh his dominic reyes fight where he um he specifically said like you know I've done some good things in my career. Like I can lose this one. And my exact thought process was, man, like I had a few good slams. I had, I, I had a few good strikes with him. I could get choked out here and people would say, Oh, he still had a good fight. And then, you know, just like John Jones said, someone else talked to him and said, you know, F that, like, that's not who I am. Like that, that exact, that exact, you know, thought came into my head. And I was like, there's no way, you know, I'm not going down like this. There's been many times in my life where I have been weak and I have, you know, thought to myself, man, I can just lose here and it's fine. And I've done that, you know, in my wrestling career, I have done that before. I will be the first to admit it, you know? Um, 
but that was when I wasn't as tough. That was when I didn't take care of my mental health as I do now. And I, I really take care of the mental side of this sport just as much as the physical aspect. And uh, I believe that's why, uh, that's why I'm very gritty. Yeah. I, I mean, again, I, I can't say it enough. You, you are a fast rising prospect, definitely have the ability and, and the, uh, the talent and the skill level to make it to the dance, you know, with the right moves, obviously it seems like, you know, you have the right mindset, you trust in your coach, which is, is amazing. And you guys are taking smart fights. You're performing well. Uh, I know the next level already knows who you are. Um, so if those offers, you know, come, you know, you guys will definitely, uh, uh, you know, look into those, correct? Oh, 100%. My coach, um, like I said, I, I trust him with everything. And we've already like briefly spoken about, you know, the next level a little bit. I tr We try not to talk too much about it just because we like to take care of our job ahead of us you know what what's the next thing you know um and right now the next thing is tim fargo so that's been on our mind a lot for for a good bit now so yeah yeah and you know you you have you've already fought at the ice plex once i uh, have but now you're coming back in the biggest card probably in the amateur card in in, in the country for amateur mixed martial arts headlining a big big venue uh in western new york what's that mean to you um, honestly, I've been in, I've been in some pretty big events in my, in my time with wrestling. So there, there's, there's no pressure. I mean, I know pressure creates diamonds, but I, uh, I really like to look at these events as if I'm the underdog. I'm just, I bleed just like he bleeds. Um, you know, I don't think I'm more important than anyone else on this card. You know, I look at a lot of the guys that are on this card and I'm like, man, like, I don't even know how I'm headlining this thing. Like, there's a, there's so many good fights. Uh, right. Like, my teammate, Nasty Nate Smith, man. Like, I'm so excited to watch him fight. That kid's a freaking dog. Like, I'm like, how am I, you know, on the card above him? Like, that that guy amazes me, like, just to watch him, you know. So, um, I try to look at it in a different perspective as if, you know, maybe I'm not the one that should be you know, headlining the fight. And I think that helps my, my mindset. I think that helps humble myself a little bit. I think everybody needs some, some humble pie and, you know, in their days. So I try to humble myself every day with something, you know? Yeah. And you, you mentioned earlier that you are a, uh, you're a wrestler and uh, I was just talking to Bubba, the, the matchmaker and the owner of full contact promotions. Now a little off topic question, how hard is it going to be if you arrive and you see just wrestling matches going, the, going off in the cage and not jumping in there and joining in. Oh my gosh, I have been away from wrestling for so long now. Um it's been over a year since I've competed and uh it's going to itch me a little bit because I I've yeah, I've still wrestled. I help coach and uh I love every bit of wrestling and I feel like I'm getting so much better at wrestling too. Like it's it's just insane. I'm going to want to get in there and compete with those guys, but um you know, I, I'm I'm gonna understand that, that there's a job ahead, and that's that's Tim Fargo. So I'll take care of business. Yeah, it's a massive matchup. And one more thing about the wrestling: what do you think about the rise of women's wrestling? Dude, the rise of women's wrestling—it's insane. It's literally the fastest growing sport in the yes. entire country out of any sport. You know, my my older sister actually wrestled when I was in junior high, and uh, it, it's amazing to see. Um, the jumps that the viewership is getting for women's wrestling, I think, I think it's well deserved. There's so many good women's wrestlers. I know my partner at my freestyle and Greco club when I was younger, she was the number one women's wrestler in the entire country. Her name's uh, Tiffany Boblitz. She's an absolute hammer, and um, you know she used to kick my butt when I was younger. And I'm like, man, yeah. like. It's it's crazy. It's crazy because when I was wrestling and even in high school, like women's wrestling wasn't entirely too big, except for in the summer for Fargo, you know, and other than that, you didn't really see much of women's wrestling. And now it's like it has just jumped levels. It is. It's amazing to see. I love it. Yeah. I and, mean, you know, the women's wrestling is, is definitely if there was a leader out there. I would definitely say, uh, you know, Bella Mir, Frank Mir, the former UFC heavyweight champions daughter who has an NIL yeah. deal. 
Uh, yeah. You have Bree Kellen from Tampa, Florida, or Lakeland, Florida. Uh, you have another rising. She's actually only a lot of the grade, but Ella Del Almeida is another girl that uh, is fast rising. Uh, I'm I'm super excited, like to see all these youth wrestlers. It's a perfect feeder system because honestly, I know we've talked before wrestling. And stop me if I'm wrong, but wrestling is the best base for MMA, right? One hundred percent, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Yeah, there's there's not there's nothing better. And then um, I know we might have covered this already. What what are your expectations for Saturday, uh, April sixth at Rage in the Cage twenty four? Before I let you go, absolute domination. Um, I look to every fight. I look to finish it in styling fashion. Um. I know looking back at every single fight I've had out of my five amateur MMA fights, I've only lost two rounds, two rounds. And one round I lost because I got an illegal elbow. I, I was elbowing and that was my first fight. Um, so I look at all five of my fights. I've had 15 rounds of fighting and I've only lost two rounds. And one round was on a disqualification point. So I technically tell myself I've won 14 out of 15 rounds in my amateur MMA career. And uh, I want to, I, there's no way I'm, I'm going to be looking to even lose a round in this fight. Um, you know, regardless if I'm striking or wrestling, whatever I'm doing, you know, I'm going to win every single round and I just look to dominate. And that's, that's, that's what I want to do. I'm almost not even looking at the fight to win. I'm just looking to dominate. I just want to prove to myself. I want to prove to everybody else that, you know, Mason Lewis is, is here to stay. Yeah. And before you go, is there anybody that you want to thank? Uh, any sponsors? I know if you, I know you have an official shirt uh, that if you go to Forever Six Apparel, you get the Team Lewis shirt, which directly supports you. Uh, is there anybody else? Any other sponsors? Any teammates you want to thank for helping you out with this camp? Man, I've got so many people in my life that I'm just beyond grateful for. Um, I think one person. Other than my coach, Zach Burhans, that sticks out to me is uh, my roommate, Austin Rich Creek, um, who has coached me in pretty much every single one of my fights. You know, he's uh, just an amazing person to not only share um, this lifestyle with, but he's just a great person all around. I think everybody needs an Austin Rich Creek in your life. You know, he's uh, he was actually the only person to train with me when I had finished high school and uh started making my, my Greco Roman career. Um, you know, we were training in a field at one day, then we would train in a football stadium. Then we would train in a planet fitness and one of the extra rooms that they had, because we didn't have any mats to train. We were like, dude, this is Greco Roman wrestling. We don't need mats. But then, uh, you know, we built a wrestling room together. We paid, you know, 1500 bucks to build a wrestling room. And then he helped me get to Cornell. And then, uh, I've just kind of, taking him with me everywhere I've gone and um he even went as far as moving to New York with me and now we're freaking roommates he's coached me and just been a mentor like a really great mentor figure so um just you know that's like another person I just can't thank enough you know yeah I love it any other sponsors or anything like that so right now we're uh we're we're looking for some sponsors but um I've got a, a Foxy's um Foxy's bar. I've got, um, that's, I, I pretty much just take my, my coach's sponsors. My coach helps me out with, uh, the sponsorships. I pretty okay. much got all the sponsors that he has. Um, you know, so we're, you know, we're looking for sponsors. So if anyone out yeah. there is, uh, wants to get on the Mason Lewis train, let me know. Yeah. That Mason Lewis train is uh full speed ahead for sure. Uh, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that I, I truly believe Mason is uh, on a rise, much like the uh, UFC heavyweight champion John Jones was. Uh, he has a big fight. He has a big fight. Definitely not an easy fight uh, next Saturday. Uh, both, uh, you know, Tim Fargo is a scrapper. He's a stalwart in the division. It's definitely going to, you know, show if, uh, you know, Mason is ready for that next leap or, or not. But, you know, get on and support him because, you know, anybody that jumps on now will always be part of that that Mason Lewis train. It's a big fight card next Saturday night, April 6th, at the uh, legendary Tim Hortons Ice Plex behind MCC in Rochester, New York. The biggest amateur 
fight night MMA card in the country. I challenge anybody to bring something bigger with more on the line than this one with two Uber prospects and Tim Fargo and Mason Lewis. Mason, as always, my man, I truly appreciate the time. And it's going to be an honor and a privilege to watch you compete uh, next Saturday night, okay? Yes, sir. Getting ready to go to work. Yeah, absolutely. Sit tight, bud. Yep.